Congratulations on completing the previous task and on writing your first program to simulate a continuous time Markov chain that has a limiting stationary distribution. In this final task of this final block the exercise for the module, you are going to write a program to simulate another continuous time Markov chain with a stationary distribution. In particular, you are going to write a program to simulate a queue. As you should be aware from the other videos for this course, a queue has a transition graph that looks like the one shown on this slide. Furthermore, in order to model a queue using the mathematics of continuous time Markov chains, we need the service time for each customer to be a random variable taken from an exponential distribution and for the arrival time for each customer to be modeled using a Poisson process. Hopefully this information on its own is enough for you to write code to generate service times and arrival times for all the customers that will enter the queuing system. To generate the service times, we just need to write the same code that we have written for every task in this exercise, namely code to generate an exponential random variable. We then take a bunch of samples from this distribution. The lines here show how the code to generate these service times looks in Python. Generating the arrival times is similarly straightforward. For the second task in this exercise, you learnt that we can generate a Poisson process by generating multiple exponential random variables and adding them all together. Code to do this operation is shown at the bottom of the slide. This slide shows the code that we've just written that generates the arrival and service times once more. Let's draw a diagram to illustrate the information that these lines have generated for us about our queue and, what, and in order to work out what we do not yet have. The time axis is shown here. As you can see from the code above, the first customer arrives at time t equals zero. The second customer then arrives at, at a time later, which in our code is stored, and stored in the second element of the list called arrival. This list stores the arrival times of all the customers, in fact, as shown in the diagram. We thus know when everyone arrives and either starts queuing or being served. We have also generated the times that it takes for each person to get served once they arrive get to the front of the queue. These are the times that are stored in the list called service. Because we know these quantities and because we know that when the first person arrives in the queuing system at time t equals zero the queue is empty, we know that when that person will leave the queuing system. It will take them the time that it takes to get served before they can leave as shown here. Now consider what happens to the second person in the queue, the person who arrives at time arrival 1. If it takes the first person the amount of time shown here to get served, the second customer will have to wait while the checkout person deals with the first person in the queue. They will thus only enter service once the first person is dealt with, as shown here. Then, once they will, are in service, it will take service one minutes for them to be dealt with. They will thus only get to leave the queuing system at the time shown here. Let's suppose, however, that the checkout person took much less per time dealing with the first customer. If it only takes the short period of time shown here to deal with the first customer, when the, then when the second customer arrives, the queue is empty and they can get straight into being served without having to queue. In other words, they can enter service at the moment they arrive and thus leave service one minute after arriving. The key quantities we need to determine are thus the times at which the customers start being served by the checkout person and the times that they leave, they finish being served and leave the queuing system. Furthermore, as we have seen in the example above, the fact that customers are served sequentially ensures that we can use the logic I just explained for the first and second customers to work out the times at which each customer enters and leaves service. The code shown in bold on this slide shows how these enter service and leave service times are calculated in practice. As you can see, the first person enters service at time t equals zero and leaves after service zero minutes later for the reasons discussed moments ago. The time at which the next customer starts getting served is then either the time that they show up at the checkout desk 
arrival I, or the time that the previous customer is being done with service, leave service time I minus one. Furthermore, for the reasons discussed on the previous slide, it is the larger of these two numbers. Once we have generated these lists of enter and leave service times, we can calculate the total time each person spends queuing and getting served by taking their leave service time and subtracting their arrival time from it. To complete the next task, you will have to calculate a histogram that shows a distribution of these waiting times. Good luck.